What's up guys, it's Track and we're reviewing this brand new Dragon Force pistol, except it's not a Dragon Force pistol, nor is it decorated like one. This is from the upcoming Dungeons and Dragons movie tie-in, and this is the pistol for about 13 bucks. This one comes down to me from Canada, courtesy of my friend Nerf Dad up there. I assume that it has, yeah, it's got French warning signs on it. That's how you know it's legit Canadian Nerfy goodness. Anyway. Uh, we've got PlayDnd.com. Interesting that Hasbro is pushing D&D on their product packaging so hard, given that they're gutting it at present. But uh, all all corporate daggering aside, we've got the Rakor blaster. So we're gonna evaluate it just on its merits as a pistol. And in all honesty, you get a lot of deco here for thirteen dollars. So. In that respect, as far as movie tie-ins go, I guess since they're not paying an extra tax to somebody like Lucasfilms or something along that line, they are able to do it slightly on a better budget. No royalties means more value for us. And true to form, like if you just wanted a dragon pistol, this is about as good as it could get. So going over the packaging, it says Raycor or Rakor, then Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Excited for the movie, it's gonna come with four darts. It says one, fires two darts in a row, two, Primes down here, three, there's a trigger, it's a jolt, it's a jolt, guys. Uh, it's a dragon uh, double strike jolt, effectively. So, let's take it out of the package, let's take a look at the darts that it comes with. We'll get a much better look at kinda what it's got going on this way. Using our snips from Foam Pro Shop, because I can't find my Sukhoi right now, but these are pretty sweet too. I don't know if we've ever pointed these out. We have custom snips over on our web store if you're interested. You too could open boxes with the raw efficiency of not cutting yourself. All right, so the darts that this comes with are color matched, and luckily it comes with enough darts to fill it and then to inevitably reload it after you lose a couple of them. The grip is atrocious as long as you're right-handed, and I'll explain that in a second. Left-handed, it's not that bad, right? There's a place for your hand to go in there. Right-handed, since the blaster is asymmetrical, you can see that the tail pushes your hand off of the grip, making it remarkably uncomfortable. In addition, the trigger is a little small, and this cloth wrap is something that I complained about way, way back in the days when Zombie Strike was still a viable subdivision of the Nerf design, but effectively, you can see that there's no way for me to hold this and hit the trigger appropriately. Now, with my left hand, like I said, it's better, but what are you gonna do? This is very much a sculptural piece, not necessarily a practical piece. You've got these horns made of rubber, along with the back spine also being made of rubber. Those are for safety reasons, since those are the primary contact points, and they technically extend past the barrel a little. You don't wanna ever fall into this, or have it fall into you, or hit your younger sibling with it, and, then, uh, and cause any sort of lasting damage. The spines are also the same rubberized material, which is just kind of interesting. There's a lot of tactile things on this. This really feels like it's the kind of blaster that's well designed for like a much, much younger foam flinger, which is, you know, the, the age that you would catch somebody at, right? Like a child would be like, sweet dragon nerf blaster, as opposed to, you know, maybe a long time Dungeons and Dragons nerd who would be like, this is an impractical nerf blaster. All the same, uh, lots of deco. And because of how the deco is done, even though there isn't necessarily paint on this side, the molding and sculptural elements give you good color breaks and transitions on the other side. Also, just a fun thing, uh, we we bust their chops in industrial design land enough, but uh, the eye being the same, like hot orange as the barrel material is actually pretty sharp. So priming and firing, it really is a left-handed blaster, guys. It's it's a jolt. The darts are, uh, the darts are pretty special in that they're dragon colored, I guess, being this, a sort of green elite dart. You always wish that you were firing something that wasn't elite darts, but in a world that that's what it comes with, it's not that bad. I don't know, for 13 bucks it's a pistol. These days you could spend $13 on a Minecraft jolt, so like you get a lot more love in a, in a product like this. It definitely feels like a Dungeons and Dragons dragon pistol. It kind of encapsulates all those elements. Let's take it outside, put it over the chronograph, give you some final thoughts. All right guys, so we're out here with our Southpaw style Dragon Blaster. We're gonna do our best to line this up. It's actually tricky to fire a blaster with such poor ergonomics uh, left-handed. That was a 58, but I feel like it bounced a little. That was an error, despite the fact that I think it was lined up properly. So maybe we'll try right-handed just to get the numbers. 41, very exciting. 
error again. Really low performance out of this, which is disappointing because uh, I think it's a cool blaster design. And one, one thing that I think is interesting is this firing from the bottom first. So uh, like I said, relatively low FPS performance. Let's grab six shots total. Come over to our target and see if we can't uh, get anything on target. 25 feet away and that was dead on. That barely fired 12 feet. So you win some, you lose some. The Smart AR system was really cool when it was first implemented, but I can't help but wonder if they've become too reliant on it. And uh, there are better ways to get more consistent performance out of blasters. Certainly when you have the, uh, the air delivery a little more consistent between shots. I miss the days of rotating turrets is I guess what I'm saying. Call me old fashioned. Well, I sure wish we had stopped at the first shot because as of yet, we haven't been able to even achieve the target. We'll put two more down range, but uh, I wanted to say good things about this blaster. I thought that it was in the, the world of jolt pickups that we've had. That one came pretty close. That one, not at all. So in the, uh, in the world of jolt reskins that we've had, this one's pretty good in terms of its overall design. I wish that it was a little more symmetrical, but I almost am okay with it not being because you get that sculptural element. If you know anything about my love of uh, folders and pocket knives, I'm actually a really big fan of Alexi's work, which is asymmetrical dragon pocket knives. So that endears me to this slightly, but there's really no excuse for such incredibly inconsistent and overall poor performance. So I think that this one uh, gets a thumb sideways from the channel. Pick it up if it's on sale and you really dig the dragon identity of it. But realistically, if that's not your jam, uh, this isn't going to do anything exciting or special for you. But that's just my take. Let me know in, in the uh, comment section down below what you think. Spenzel, oh, eh, never mind. The, uh, the scale's there. Not, uh, not what you want running over your knuckles. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Comments down below. Always happy to reply to cool comments. Would love a thumbs up on the video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and bell so that you guys catch all my content coming in 2023. Much love. Blast on, Drac out.